This video is sponsored by Train World, America's discount model train store since 1968. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're talking about how these are gonna change up so many of my Arduino projects. Welcome back everybody. First of all, you might notice I'm wearing something a little bit different than I did in the previous clip. That is because when I shot this video, I actually had not crossed the 10,000 subscriber point and I had shot an intro for it and everything. So since then, I have crossed the 10,000 subscriber point. And uh, first of all, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for all the support you've given me. And I wanna say thank you to Train World who has sponsored this giveaway. Those guys are absolutely amazing. They gave me a couple prizes to give away in N and HO scale. And you can check those out right up here. If you wanna enter, the entries have officially closed. They closed yesterday so that I have a good amount of time to go ahead and get them all written up for the random drawing. And uh, that random drawing is actually going to be next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. So you'll definitely not want to miss that, especially if you are entered for the giveaway. Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, and I am going to do it live. Also, I am going to still release a video that day, so you have a video in the morning, and then the live stream at night, it'll be right here on YouTube. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop back into our regularly scheduled video. Now, let's talk about what we're talking about today, which is changing a lot of my Arduino projects. And the ones I'm talking about are the ones that use ways to sense where trains are on the track. This is a current sensor, and there's a lot of scientific terms, but basically what it can do is, specifically with AC current, is it can pick up the magnetic field that is generated when current is flowing through a circuit. So what we can basically do here is it can output a signal that can be interpreted and then used to determine whether or not something is on the rail since you are completing a circuit. So let's dive into what we're talking about here. This is an AC current sensor and basically the way it works is you will wrap the wire that you are trying to see if there's current on around in that little hole right there and these pins power it and send a signal back to whatever computing device you're using to test it. This is a pretty standard 5 amp uh, current sensor. One problem I've had with this one is that the bottom line is I can't get it consistently sensitive enough to pick up in scale. Lucky for us a lot of the big model railroad companies have already worked on this problem. So what we're going to be using is uh, this bad boy from NCE. This is an NCE BD20, and it is basically the exact same thing. It uses the same effect to be able to pick up current. The difference is it is already pre-wired to be all or nothing. So any sort of current is picked up, it's going to be triggered, and it makes it a lot easier than using just a standard current sensor. They're slightly more expensive, but not really, and they work extremely well. So we're going to be using this in our project today. Now, one of the biggest perks of using one of these versus using any of the other methods that I've talked about for block detection, track detection, anything like that, is that this is going to be the least invasive way to do occupancy detection on your layout. All you have to do is basically isolate one rail of track, which is what I've done here, and connect a feeder wire to it, and this can be installed underneath versus having to drill out a section, put in uh, infrared sensors or photoresistors or something like that. This is the easiest thing to do. It is slightly more expensive to do, but this is definitely the easiest way to go, especially if you have an existing layout. And it's going to make programming down the road a lot easier. So let's go ahead and hop into wiring this thing up. And one cool thing about it is it has everything labeled here very, very well. And you have your five volt to 12 volt positive. You have your relay connection because you can also run a relay with this and you have your logic pin, which is what we're gonna be using. And then you have the ground. So let's go ahead and connect everything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew everything here. And we just go ahead and take a look one more time. We'll go ahead and connect the ground and what's going to end up being 5 volt first and then I'm going to connect an orange wire that will represent our logic 
and we don't need to worry about the relay pin for this setup. The next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to take uh, one of the feeders for the section that we're going to be using and we're going to need to take it and we're just going to need to wrap it just like that. And that'll be enough to give us an indication of current. And then I'm going to take it and just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to twist these together. That'll be enough. You'll want to obviously do something more bulletproof if you're doing this permanently. But there you go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hook up our connections. Um, we're going to hook up to 5 volt and ground. And then, as you saw in my script, we're going to hook up to digital pin 7. So that is all of the wiring that you need to do for the BD20. That it's, it's really, really simple. One last thing we're going to do is we're going to run an LED, and we're going to run it out of pin number 6. And we're going to connect our negative to the other ground slot on the Arduino. And we just need to run that out to where the LED is. All right, so we got everything wired up and now we're going to hop into the Arduino IDE. Now what we're doing today is a little bit different. I'm basically giving you guys a sketch that you can prototype with. This allows you to hook up any sensor to a digital pin and be able to read it. So you can use this for all sorts of sensors, not just the current sensor. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're in our Arduino IDE and rather than walking you through the entire sketch as I write it, what I'm going to do is basically just show you what this sketch is. This is a very basic sketch that you can use not just with the current sensor, but with any sensor that you can hook up with it to see if it's working. And it's also a great place to start in terms of Arduino because it's a very simple way of showing that your sensor is registering something. So we're going to go ahead and begin at the top. We have void setup and two parentheses and a bracket. Then we see serial.begin9600. And what that does is it sets the baud rate for the serial monitoring and it begins the serial monitoring. Next up we see pin mode, parentheses, 7, comma, input. Now what this does is it establishes our digital pin 7 as our sensor input since we hooked it up there. Next up, we have another pin mode, and it is 6 and output, and this establishes digital pin 6 as your LED output. So that is it for the setup. The setup is basically a part of the loop that just runs once and establishes everything. Next, we're going to go into the continual loop, or the void loop, and you see little parentheses in a bracket, and we're going to start off by declaring the integer value A1. And this equals digital read of 7, which means that the value A1 is going to be whatever pin 7 is reading. Next up we have serial print LN or serial print line value A1. Now what that's going to do is it's going to set to every time your Arduino takes a reading of the sensor, it's going to display that in the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE when you have the Arduino hooked up to your computer via USB. And lastly we have a delay of 100 which means that this loop is going to go over and over every tenth of a second, so you'll take a reading every 0.1 seconds. Now on to our if-then statements. So the first one we have is if parentheses value A1 is less than 1, or 0, you put a bracket and it says digital write 6 high. And what this does is it turns on the LED. We then close that section with a bracket, and then we also say else if value A1 is greater than zero, digital write six comma low. And that turns the LED off. So overall what this sketch is doing is basically it sets up what our pins are doing, it sets up our monitoring system on our computer, and it sets up a integer that can store what uh, pin seven, which is our sensor input, is reading. And then it can tell us whether it's reading something or not by turning on and off an LED. And this is a great basic sketch to start with if you're looking to get into sensors and Arduinos. Okay, so let's go ahead and load it in and go ahead and hop back over to the workbench. Okay, so we have everything wired up. We've got the BD20 wired up with the current sensor. We've got an LED wired up so that it can tell us when the Arduino thinks the track is occupied. And just a reminder, our block goes from here to here. So let's go ahead and run a train and see what happens.
you can see as soon as current is picked up, that light comes on. Once the current draw is completely gone away, the light goes off. Now, one great thing about this particular system is, let me back the train back onto the block. I have no power whatsoever going to this particular train, but because it's detecting the resistance of the electricity flowing through the completed circuit and going through the motor, it's telling me that the block is occupied. So the train can be at a dead stop anywhere along this block. Now some of you may be like, oh, that's all well and good, but what about if it's just rolling stock in the block? How can I tell if it's occupied? Well, the companies that manufacture rolling stock and their accessories are already ahead of you on that. There are several companies that make axles that are metal that have resistors built into them so that they can complete the circuit and add a little bit of resistance, which means that the BD20 can pick them up. And you just need to change out one axle on your rolling stock so that it works. So that's how all this works. This is the least invasive way to do block detection and occupancy detection on your layout. And this has a ton of uses. I'm actually going to be going back through all of my previous Arduino projects that involve some sort of occupancy detection. And we're going to be redoing them so that they work with this as well. And that's what's coming up in the future. That's what gets me the most excited about this is that you can hook up a BD20 to an Arduino, which means that we can modify all of our previous sketches to use this, and this is actually gonna simplify a lot of the sketches. So I'm really, really excited for what's coming up. So that's how you use current sensing with an NCE BD20 and an Arduino for occupancy detection, and it has a lot of applications on a model railroad, and we're going to be going through a lot of them, including reworking some of my Arduino sketches. Now, you may notice that I'm back in the blue shirt, which means that I recorded the old outro for this video as well before the 10,000 subscriber mark. So again, 10,000 subscriber giveaway winner announcement is going to be at 8 p.m. next Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'm still gonna have a video that day. Also, um, if you wanna check out the prizes, if you've already entered, entries are closed now, but if you've already entered, you can check it out right up here as well as in the description below. And um, also, if you haven't, I'm not releasing a new building today, but you should definitely go and check out my Etsy store. I've got eight in-scale buildings up, and I'm planning several more series right now. So you'll definitely want to follow that Etsy store if you are on Etsy and be on the lookout for in-scale and maybe even some HO scale buildings in the future. So that's it for today, guys. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe and happy railroading. You see, you guys may uh, think that I'm wearing a button down to be fancy and all this kind of stuff. I'm not. You can actually see I got gym shorts on <laughs> underneath this, so uh, not being fancy at all. <laughs>